Welcome everyone. My name is Annie Pocklington and I am here with Washington State Gear Up for another one of our vocational and technical series program overviews. Today, we're super excited to talk aviation with Everett Community College. Before I pass it off to our guest, Gwen, today, I'm gonna to go over just a few quick things. First and foremost, keep your camera off and your mic muted. If you have any questions after this presentation, please feel free to reach out to either Gwen or myself and we will absolutely direct you to getting the information that you need. When we talk college fit with Washington State Gear Up and, the Was and at the Washington Student Achievement Council, what we really talk about is college as a, a wider umbrella than some of us know it to be. So we're talking two and four year institutions, technical and vocational programs, certificate degrees, even career and military options. The great thing about Washington State is that we have tons of institutions and all of them are really great. So when you are out there seeking a college pathway, a post high school pathway, you really wanna think about yourself and your own wants and needs as both a student and as someone who's thinking a little bit further down the line in terms of what you wanna do for the rest of your life. So you wanna think about things like, uh, you know, your career, what kind of major or academics that an institution needs to provide to be the right fit for you. You wanna think about social experiences and what's important to you in terms of um, being around other students or clubs and activities. You also wanna think about housing and work options. And then of course, you always wanna consider cost. The great thing about this series, as well as some other series that I'm gonna tell you about and resources we have, is that they're designed to help you explore different options and um, opportunities available to you. So again, this series is all about technical and vocational programs. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. But I also, also want you to be aware of our previous virtual visit series, which overviewed 16 different campuses across the state of Washington. You can check that out at the link there. If you can't access that link through this recording or uh, presentation, go ahead and reach out to your Gear Up coordinator or just go, up, uh, go to gearup.wa.gov and visit the student page. Another wonderful resource is from WACAN and it's this um, an interactive tool. It's basically a big map that showcases all the two-year, four-year and technical programs throughout Washington State. So the map looks just like the one on the screen and it's a really great tool for you to navigate and look into different opportunities for you. All right, so now to this series. So again, this series is all about technical and vocational programs. So if you are a student with a really specific career goal in mind and you wanna get into the job market rather quickly, technical and vocational programs may be programs that you want to explore. So the cool thing about technical and vocational programs is that they are, they vary widely in the content that they offer. So they vary from, you know, healthcare fields to IT fields to um, culinary arts. Today we are talking aviation. So all different sorts of career focuses. They also vary in program length and cost um, and in what kind of degree you might get. So some programs are certificate programs, while other programs may allow you to get an AA in completing um, the program. But what's the same about these programs is that they're really wanting to give you hands-on training for a specific career. So that is ultimately the goal of all technical and vocational programs. So I'm gonna give you a quick look at Everett Community College's Aviation Maintenance Technology Program before I pass it off to our guest, Gwen. First and foremost, this program is located in Everett, Washington, so you can see the little star on the map there. And the cool thing about this program is that it's housed at a public community and technical uh, college, which usually means there's an opportunity for you to get an AA if you would like. All right, and with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to our guest, Gwen Holt. Thank you so much, Annie. And thank you for having me here. Are you able to see my screen? We cannot see your screen quite yet. Go okay. ahead and try now. Okay. Did you select that share screen button? I did, and it's now gone away. Huh. huh. Okay, let's, let's try it again.
Okay. Okay. Are you able to see it now? Yes. Looks great. Okay, perfect. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here. I'm Gwen Holt and I'm the program coordinator for uh, aviation maintenance and avionics. And I'll, I'll cover both programs. Uh, we offer two at Everett Community College. And here is our location. As Annie said, we are located in Everett, Washington. Aviation is actually in South Everett, uh, right across the street from the new Painfield Airport. So we're not on the main campus of Everett Community College, but about 10 or 11 miles south of there. Okay, uh, we've been around for 53 years, uh, the Aviation Maintenance Program has. And uh, avionics has been around for about four years. We started that program in 2017. They are two separate and distinct programs, but they are really designed to complement one another. So if a, uh, some students may start out in aviation maintenance and then go into avionics or vice versa. Okay, aviation maintenance technology, what is that? Um, it is preparation for the FAA's airframe and uh, power plant license exams. So for anyone who's going to do any sort of uh, maintenance or repair, or any troubleshooting on an aircraft, they need to be licensed. And that's what our program is designed to do. It is uh, for a power plant, which has to do with uh, the engines and airframe has to do with all the other systems on the plane. So it is a very rigorous program. It's two years long, it's eight consecutive quarters. So for any student who starts in uh, fall quarter, they would actually go through eight consecutive quarters and they would finish in two years. And summer is an academic quarter for us. So there are quarter breaks, but there's no full summer off uh, for aviation maintenance students. They actually go through those eight quarters. Uh, it's gonna cover uh, different parts of, uh, we'll cover different parts of the curriculum, the general curriculum, uh, which is what students start out with. And that's going to take two quarters. And uh, once students move from uh, general curriculum, then they'll go into power plant and then three quarters of airframe. So the classes, uh, some of the classes that we start off with in general curriculum would be basic electricity, math and physics, um, aircraft drawings. Once students go into uh, power plant, they will uh, cover things like reciprocating engines, uh, engine ignition and starting systems, turbine engines, and uh, airframe would cover things like airframe fuel systems, uh, composite, sheet metal, uh, airframe inspection. So uh, those are just some of the 47 subjects that will be taught over the course of the three years. So if you're wondering if, if this is right for me, what are some of the things that are skill sets uh, or that you will learn? First and foremost is the ability to apply the highest level of safety standards. That's the most important thing uh, because you are dealing with uh, in transportation and dealing with uh, aircraft. Having great attention to details is gonna be important. If you enjoy working with tools, if you like reading schematics, uh, understanding mathematical formulas, their applications, the ability to think clearly. And also documentation and recording is going to be uh, extremely important. So anytime that you are working uh, in our, our hangar, working on any of the aircraft, you will have to document what you've done. And um, in that recording process is going to be training for what you'll have to, um, what you'll be expected to do when you're out in the workforce. And having the ability to work independently as well as on teams. Okay. Okay, um, this slide didn't exactly come out right, but the um, average hourly wage is $34.51 per hour for aviation maintenance technicians. Some technicians may make less and some will make more. So um, there's been a demand, uh, increasing demand for aviation maintenance technicians. As you know, with COVID, there's was a, such a downturn in the commercial air um, traffic uh, sector. But as that's increasing, as things are bouncing back, uh, the opportunities are coming back as well. Um, so there's a link there that shows the 
um, labor market statistics by occupation and also the Boeing outlook for commercial um, technicians as well. Okay, there are entry requirements to get into the program. Uh, one requirement um, is for math and the other is for English. So a student would need to have eligibility for Math 86, which is an algebra class, and eligibility for English 101. Students don't actually need to take those classes. They just need to place into them or be eligible them for them. There are several different ways of going about that. Um, for high school students, uh, if you've gone through Algebra 2 or Algebra 2 Trig and seen your English or four years of English, and um, if your grades are satisfactory, then you've probably met the, the math and English requirement. Also, if you've taken the, uh, any AP test, if you scored a three or higher for math and English, that would qualify to meet the requirement. Um, the SAT, ACT, or PSAT standardized tests, or taking the SBAC tests within the past couple of years. So those are just a few ways that uh, students, especially our high school students, can meet the requirements coming in. Um, there's also the Accuplacer test, uh, which for those students who may not have met those requirements in high school, there's actually a placement test that they can take. And as long as those students place into Math 86 and English 101, then that's all we're looking for, for placement uh, to be able to move forward in the uh, process of entering the aviation maintenance program. Okay, we do offer degrees. Um, there's the Aviation Maintenance Technology degree, that's an ATA, and that is uh, for the two years of aviation maintenance, plus general ed courses uh, to round out the curriculum. There's also the air Aircraft Electronics Technician degree, and uh, then we also offer uh, Airframe and Avionics and Aviation Maintenance Technology, the AAS uh, T transfer degree that goes on to Clover Park. So uh, the aviation maintenance degree, we'll start there. Uh, as I mentioned, that is uh, the backbone of the, that degree is going to be the two years of aviation maintenance technology curriculum, in addition to taking some general ed classes as well. Uh, the aircraft electronics technician is going to be um, the aviation maintenance curriculum um, in addition to some additional uh, gen ed courses. Airframe and avionics is going to be the airframe portion of the aviation maintenance degree, plus uh, advanced avionics and general ed courses. And then the aviation maintenance technology degree, the um, Associate of Applied Science transfer degree, the backbone of that is also going to be the two years of aviation maintenance, gen ed courses, and that transfers on to Clover Park where they have additional uh, degrees that can be obtained. So there are degrees that you can earn through Everett Community College through taking our um, professional technical courses. Okay, we'll go on to avionics next. And um, avionics has more to do with the uh, electronics and the instrumentation of the aircraft. So things that uh, students will learn is how to troubleshoot, install, repair, test, and inspect aviation electronics equipment. This includes radar, navigation systems, and communication. So the uh, length of the program is two quarters, uh, so it's approximately six months. Our students that are in the program now started um, spring quarter. They'll go through spring and summer. And we'll have students that will start fall quarter, they'll go through fall and winter. So for the, uh, avi for the avionics program, there are two entry points every year. Okay, and some of the skill sets and uh, abilities uh, that will be uh, taught uh, are pretty much the same as in the, um, the aviation maintenance program. So again, the ability to apply a high level of safety standards, attention to detail, working with tools, reading schematics is going to be especially important in avionics, uh, mathematical formulas and their applications, thinking critically, 
documenting and recording and the ability to work independently as well as in teams. In avionics technicians, uh, the national median hourly wage is $31.59. That's of, as of May 2019. And there's a link there for the uh, Bureau of Labor and Statistics. So um, about half the technicians will make less than that, about half will make more. Okay, and there are entry requirements for advanced avionics as well. Um, the math requirement is higher. And the reason for that is because of the formulas that are required in avionics. And, uh, but the English is the same. So again, the same um, ability, the same ways that a student can uh, meet the requirements are the same. It's just that they would have to place higher in math for the advanced avionics program. Okay, uh, part of avionics preparation is going to be um, preparation for the, an FCC license. And the curriculum covers the preparation, but there is an, addi an additional fee to test. And that's in addition to the tuition and fees that students are already paying for the program. Okay, and the certificates that uh, students can earn in avionics, by going through the two quarter program, students are automatically going to earn four short term certificates. That's the aircraft electronics, the aircraft wiring, aircraft avionics systems, and avionics technician. So the first quarter of avionics is going to be 20 credits. The second quarter will also be 20 credits for a total of 40 credits. Um, those are short term certificates. And those are uh, certificates are not financial aid eligible. However, if a student takes a third quarter uh, going full time and takes an additional 15 credits of general ed courses, a math, uh, an English and a communication studies, they would earn the aircraft electronics technician certificate. And in that case, the entire avionics program would be financial aid eligible. So that would include the short-term certificates plus the aircraft electronics tech certificate. So, um, and so that would, rather than going for two uh, quarters of avionics, a student would go for a third quarter by taking those gen ed classes. Okay, uh, program supports, uh, you will be assigned to an advisor. The advisors in the program are also faculty. They uh, will teach, you'll be taught by um, your advisor at some point because the, the faculty uh, teach different sections. So at some point your, uh, your teacher will also be your advisor. There's an employment facilitator as well. So, and she's wonderful. Um, she helps students if you are looking for a job while you're in the program, certainly once you graduate from the program, um, she can assist with uh, mock interviews if you'd like to help with that. If you are looking for a certain position, she can help you tweak your cover letter for that. Um, she can help with resume preparation. And as things are bouncing back in the, uh, the uh, commercial air sector, she's getting calls from some of our industry partners who want to uh, meet with our students. And recently she's heard from Alaska Airlines, Horizon, um, Aviation Technical Services, which is right on Payne Field where we're located, uh, Delta and United, just to name a few. They're actually reaching out to her because they want students, uh, they want our graduates and, uh, to, and they wanna meet with them and talk about the employment opportunities that are there. So as things are, are getting better and as things turn around in the, the commercial sector, um, there are opportunities out there. And uh, for avionics um, as well, um, she's getting calls from Kenmore Air and Dynan Avionics, just to name a few that would like to meet with our students. Uh, she's the one who arranges the career talks and the career tours. And pre-COVID, our industry partners would come in to meet with our students. But because of COVID, everything is virtual. And um, so they are, still, they are still able to hold those meetings by Zoom and then uh, still meet with our students and interview them. Uh, 
Okay, um, are there any questions? Awesome. Well, thank you, Gwen. I don't see any questions in the chat right now, but I can give it a minute here. So if you do have questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat or you can unmute your mic and ask. That's fine too. So I have a question. Um, so what is the rate of students that graduate from your program that have a job before they, um, before they graduate? Before they graduate. Um, some of the students come in to the program and they're already working and they want to um, up their skills to be able to move on. But I would say pre-COVID, pre it was actually 100%. And the reason it was 100% is because any student who was looking for a job actually found employment. We do have some students that were not counted in that because we had students who own their own plane and they want to come back to school to um, learn those technical skills, get their AMP license, and be able to uh, work on their own planes and, and do their own um, FAA, their own inspections. Um, right now, I couldn't give you the exact statistics on that, but I know that things are are getting better. But again, prior to that, it was literally 100% of students who wanted a job uh, were placed into a job. But I can uh, find that information out for you through our employment facilitator to give you exact numbers. Awesome, thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions while we still have Gwen with us? And oh, I should ask, um, was that, did you want that for both programs for aviation maintenance and also avionics? Yeah, uh, I would just be curious. I was just, I mean, and, and you gave me, uh, I mean, 100%, and I'm assuming it's probably fairly high even now. So, um, but yeah, I'd be curious. I'm just, yeah. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Well, Gwen, thank you so much for being with us uh, this afternoon. We really appreciate learning a little bit more about Everett and um, all the aviation technology and aviation uh, programs available to students. So we really appreciate the information and yeah, it's been wonderful to have you with us today. It's been wonderful being here, Annie. Thank you so much for inviting me. Of course.